Hey, this is Lorena and I wanted to do a video for you on a quilt that I did for my client that had a little bit of fullness. It's not waviness to say, but a little bit of fullness. And I hope you like this video. In this video, I'm going to share with you how you don't have to pleat and how you kind of can work the fabric to kind of get rid of that fullness so that, um, you know, it kind of comes out really pretty without pleating, you know, okay? <laughs> on the left side of the quilt is where you see a lot more of the fullness and so this I had to work a lot more I had to kind of make be on top of it and just make sure that it kind of gathered that area up. I was telling you to watch out for waviness before it becomes like a huge problem now the blessing is as you can see there's a little bit of puckering here anytime you have this kind these kind of borders you have to make sure that you have this done well because this has a lot of stretch and bias, which can be problematic and causes all this kind of fullness. Anytime you have a different kind of border, like strips, little strips or squares like this, understand that this can cause waviness. Since I'm seeing it kind of already angled down, if I straighten it, do you see that? I can kind of fix it by bringing the quilt up and stretching stretching the waviness or the fullness in other areas of the quilt and as it quilts I could kind of fill it in as it goes around nothing like some starch though okay but anytime you have a border like this that's why on my diamond border I made sure that I did the inside border it helps prevent extreme waviness and hopefully this is all I need to worry about on this quilt, but I don't think it's that bad. I could iron it out. It is a beautiful quilt. The quilter did a beautiful job of the piecer. Let's see if I can get it. I will post pictures, of course. This is what it looks like after I starched it. Almost gone, which is awesome. Be careful when you wet white fabric with colored blocks because um, <laughs> when you do not uh, turn the seam towards the dark you can see some of the coloring which is okay um, after this because I wet it with starch a little bit to starch it because it was a little bit full here but be careful when you wet the fabric if this is your client's quilt you don't want the fabric to stain the white and then you're going to have to do a lot of comp answering to the client. I'm going to move it this way and move some of the fullness up. So the fullness gets quilted inside the quilting, like right there. You see the fullness here? Now, as the quilting is moving along, I kind of put it towards the thread line. So you still see it a little bit, but in a minute it'll disappear. I'm pushing it towards the thread line. And you see it right there, it kind of disappears. Now you don't see it at all. See how it, the fullness is in here. Fullness here, but it'll just get quilted out real beautifully. See now it disappears. Now you see the fullness here.
but there's no pleats. You see that? And a lot of the fullness has been taken up by pushing the fabric up a little bit. Like you see some of it here, you see some of it there, and some here. But it's not pleating or anything, and that's how you can get rid of fullness when it's not bad. The fullness is not bad. You just saw it a little bit, but you could see how it worked it inside some of the quilting in here. You're also going to see that where the quilting is, it's kind of, the fullness is inside the quilting, which she used cotton batting. Once she washes this quilt, it's completely going to disappear, and she's not going to know no difference. And as a matter of fact, I showed her the quilt, and she didn't even notice that I did what I did. Moving the fullness towards this area, so when it comes in quilts, I get rid of some of it and I'm dispersing the fullness in different areas of the quilt. See, now you can't even tell. You don't want to make a pleat, so be careful when you do this. And now, the fullness that was here is completely gone. This had a lot of fullness. And now you see that a lot of the fullness has been taken up. One of the ways I did that is I moved the fullness upward towards the stitch. And that's what I did over here. And you can see that the fullness is right there. So I took it up and it's kind of like inside the quilting now. Now I still have a tiny bit and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to move the fullness up a little bit right there and now it's inside this quilting space and it disappears and let it go ahead and just quilt on through. I really do hope you like this video on how to get rid of fullness off of a quilt without having to pleat it. Let me just say, like I always say, using starch is awesome. I recommend that you use a uh, liquid starch or any type of starch, but I've noticed I like this liquid starch because it literally goes inside the fibers of the fabric. As a matter of fact, I did roll the quilt up one time and I realized that I thought there was gonna be a lot more fullness or even to the point that it had waviness. And when I sprayed the starch, it seemed to have gathered the fabric so much that when I straightened it out, the fullness disappeared. Also too, another trick, and I've shared this before on wavy borders, is to go ahead and use a hot steam iron after you've put the starch. Now it's okay for you not to use starch if you don't want to, but starch is a blessing, <laughs> especially in this kind of process, because you want to get your quilt as flat as you possibly can, because if you're doing this technique, there is an opportunity for as it's quilting along for it to pleat where the full areas are. That's why I would push the fabric all the way to the thread line and kind of let it puddle to the thread line and then when it quilted the next area you didn't have any pleats or anything like that. This is a real simple video on how to get rid of waviness or fullness, it's more fullness, off of a quilt that my client did a great job. There was just a little bit of fullness in these three areas that I shared with you. So I really hope you like this video and, and uh, uh, I appreciate you watching. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one, okay? Bye. Should I cut my hair? My husband's a long haired, I used to have long, long, long hair. It's so hot in Texas to do that. And now I'm like, I need to cut my hair. And he's like, no, no hair cutting. You leave it alone. <laughs> um, so leave me a comment below if I should cut my hair or if I should let it grow out. I don't know. It's hot. I need to put it in a ponytail. But yeah, bye. Yeah.
tying hair in Texas. <laughs> See, that's why I have to cut my hair because if I'm going to have it in a ponytail anyways, I might as well just have it short. Just, just, just thought. Thank you for watching. Bye.